Bank Valley Trail was named Pennsylvania's first trail of the year in 2014 because of its scenic beauty, connection to other trails, and its dedicated volunteers who have in a record-breaking seven years created one of the best long ride trails in the state as judged by trail users. Stretches from Brookville, the county seat of Jefferson County, 42 miles to the Allegheny River, passing through the heart of Somerville, Hawthorne, New Bethlehem, and other small communities through natural scenic areas along Red Bank Creek in southern Clarion County. It includes a nine-mile spur starting at mile six at Lawsonham and continues at a three to four percent grade through the outskirts of Rymersburg to near Sligo in central Clarion County. Many trail users call it their new favorite trail because of few road crossings, scenery along Red Bank Creek, wildlife, birds and wildflowers, historical markers, art, shelters, the width and nearly level grade. It was built in the 1870s as the low grade railroad from the Allegheny River to Driftwood and was also known as the Mountain Laurel Railroad. The trail connects to Armstrong Trail and is part of the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail Alliance, which connects at Pittsburgh to the Great Allegheny Passage and DC. Red Bank Valley Trail and Armstrong Trail can do for their towns what other trails and what the Great Allegheny Passage has done for the six small towns near its route. Millions in annual revenue, new businesses, jobs, and improved properties. Tourism is Pennsylvania's second largest industry. Tourism dollars, or OPM, other people's money, present a great opportunity for existing and new local businesses. Some local businesses are already seeing the benefit. Stay tuned to see the potential. So it was a, it's, it's a great trail. It's really well maintained. Um, it's remarkably flat. It's like the flattest the trail, trail I think I've ever been on in my life. So it was a pretty, but this is a terrific trail. It's very, very nice. Yeah, we'll definitely come back. You know, here is really convenient because you can spend a couple of days, go out back one day, out back another day, and you're good to go. So We've seen that, like I said, along the Allegheny Passage there are a lot of this the small towns that just, you know, the, the industries and businesses that were once there are gone. And so this is sort of a, a way for them to reconstitute themselves and start. And you're seeing now there are little more shops, bicycle shops, and, you know, bed and breakfast are springing Cafes up and, and, you know, yeah. and, and, and things like that. And you do start to see that these trails are not just for people just to go out and have fun on that, you know, we're beginning to see a lot of these small towns being able to be revitalized. Because let's face it, these industries aren't coming back. But up here, it's, we're an hour and a half from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, you can get up here in no time. So, and out on the trails now, I'm seeing more and more like seniors mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. um, so anything to make their experience mm -hmm you know, more palatable and, and more enjoyable would, would be good and shuttle, you know, a shuttle service for would that. probably be good. And the well. benches and stuff that we have along our trail here are very nice to set and rest. And there are a couple shelters That's now. That's so what we talked about. It's, it's interesting when you, you pass through some of the little towns, the history of how they were established or why they were originally established there is very mm -hmm. fascinating. Mm -hmm. And coming through these small towns, especially Brookville, I was just like, wow, what a beautiful little town this is. And this was the first time I've ever actually stopped. And I'm personally a really big fan of small businesses, and I like supporting local small businesses. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are like that. There's a lot of people that want to get back to supporting, you know, Main Street USA, if you will. Um, is it always this busy, especially in the fall? Or? We'll be busy until the middle of November. And then it'll be pretty slow until like the first of January. They have quite a few bed and breakfasts right here in town. And then they have the hotel. Because that's why there's not very many people that live here. Has there been a big increase since the bike trail was finished as opposed to when the kayaking was here? Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. It's a money maker, let me yep. tell you. Trail itself, 
uh, to my business is a, a big benefit. Yes, During we are week. open actually from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. So we're open every day. I do have the hostel also next door, and that's another reason because of the hostel, we have to be open to accommodate when the bikers come in. As far as credit cards, if you don't take credit cards, you may as well forget it as mm -hmm. far as with the cyclists. Now, we do require a $10 minimum for mm -hmm. the credit card, but we also have an ATM here in the building that if they do not want to use their credit card and it's less than $10, they can do the ATM if they don't mm -hmm. have money. And so far, so we try to accommodate them in both aspects. And we are so, so fortunate to have these trails right in our backyard because anywhere else you just have to be riding out on the street, but it's calming for your soul. I mean, it, it's just a wonderful experience to have these. We meet people from downstate, you know, from the city who come up here and we'll spend the night in the B&Bs and of course being from Frostburg we, have, we get a lot of business from biking communities, you know, we're traveling up here and staying in the B&Bs and using the restaurants and it's a, it's a big deal in Cumberland as well. My name is Dee Steven, uh, I'm owner of Derailer Bike Shop Cafe on the Butler Freeport Community Trail. We're open currently for summer hours are Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday noon to 8 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. We, what we find is, especially on a trail, you get groups of people in, in certain times. So we have our morning group that comes through around 10, then we have our lunch crowd that goes from noon to maybe 2 or 3. And then of course once the sun goes down or starts going on the other side, we start seeing people coming out to do their workouts. We stay open as long as the sun's up. We're seeing more people coming through wanting to know if there's a campground nearby where they can camp right on the trail. We just recently we got a group called the Green Riders, which were coming through from Central Park and they're going to, I believe, Washington State. We, we actually do rentals right now. We rent bikes and a lot of times people are on the trail, they don't carry cash, they carry a card. It's a lot easier, it fits in their pocket. There are expenses that come with that, but you know, it is the cost of doing business. My name is Brenda Schick. I own and operate the Brick House Bed and Breakfast in Oak Ridge. I have eight bedrooms in my bed and breakfast. I have five cabins. I have a tree house, a replica mine shaft, all here on the property. I do get a lot of people that use the trail. It's, we have easy access here. They have been showing up by the groves lately. We've been getting a lot of people. And once they're here one time, they book again and they bring more people with them. Everybody loves the trail. The flatness of it is a major thing that they really, really like. We get a lot of people from the Pittsburgh area, West Virginia, Ohio, and we're starting to get uh, quite a few from uh, the Washington DC area. They are looking for a bike rental place and definitely we need a bike shop along the way somewhere. I think a shuttle service would be a great opportunity for somebody to, to pick up and do. I think we are very successful. Um, from what I understood when I got into the bed and breakfast business, it would take four to five to seven years to get established. I think we've been established since day one. The group I have here right now, they've studied the whole week and they've been out on the trail every day. I've seen them walking or riding. They go to our local restaurant in New Bethlehem. It's two miles. You can either walk it take your bicycles or you can drive down. So it's, it's close and convenient for everybody. We definitely need all of our restaurants to take credit cards. Some of the more popular ones don't. We've got a good variety of restaurants. I find that the people from the city are looking for just some hometown cooking. Some of the restaurants are not open long enough because when you have people coming from the city, they're working till six, seven o'clock at night and then going out to dinner. Where here, our restaurants are closing down five, six o'clock. And so if they're out on the trail, if they're not back in time, they're limited to where they get to, to go. I've already taken bookings for next year. Bike people are coming and this is the best job ever. I absolutely love it. Everybody is so nice and unique. And we uh, have had people from Norway and uh, Switzerland have been here. We've had people from Africa. So we're getting out there. We're international now. <laughs> uh, my name is Ray Schreckengoss and this is Top Smoke and Grill and I am the owner. We get uh, people that travel from Brookville regularly. They uh, bike down on the trail. Um, we find people stopping 
They're kayaking through. And you're glad the trail is here? Yes. Well, I'm from Sligo, PA, and this is only a few miles away, and I just got my bike from Dubois, and it'd be nice to have something a little local for maintenance and, you know, just, yeah, love the trail out here. Uh, we try to come out every weekend. We've been bouncing around because we've been trying all the new trails, re newer bike owners here, but, yeah. My name is Tim Murray, mayor of New Bethlehem Borough, and also owner of uh, Super Subways Inc., uh, owner of this restaurant here, and six others in the Clare and Armstrong County region. Uh, we're receiving great response from both sides. The school does us very well. Route 28, of course, has a, has a huge amount of traffic. And of course, we have the trail right behind us, uh, which we are seeing uh, traffic continue to grow on it and more and more people stopping as they travel. Uh, yeah, I worked with PA Wallace uh, during the construction phase of this restaurant, and what we were trying to do was pinpoint what makes PA special and institute that in our building and construction phases and uh, we've had just huge amount of comments uh, from travelers this is the nicest they've seen so when they're right here to my left uh, which faces the trail directly there are days when, when you see you know 30 40 uh, people walking the trail a lot of them are locals then you see a lot of people stop come in and ask okay if we park here we're going to take a ride going to take a walk when they come back they stop 99.9 percent .9 of the time grab a bite to eat too we do have the pamphlets supplied by by the trail association go through pretty pretty rapidly I'm, my employees have all viewed the pamphlets uh, know the basics about the trail that, that are knowledgeable enough lead them towards the pamphlets so that they can use those uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of improvements and I'm hoping it is because of the trail. We're seeing a lot of uh, smaller eateries coming in. We've got some existing shops fixing up their storefronts, uh, seeing them putting new roofs on their buildings. You know, these people are investing money in New Bethlehem. I, I feel that they must, like me, feel that it's a good investment and, and we hope to see this business continue to grow. Biggest complaint I hear this in, in New Bethlehem is the failure to accept credit and debit cards. My business, 60 plus percent of my business is credit debit card related. Um, if they go to a place and, and walk to the door and say, credit cards are, are not accepted, they'll turn around and leave. Hours you again, want to be open. Most of your people uh, are working till five, so you need to be open. Follow the daylight hours. I'd love to see a, a bike shop open in town. Do a, a spare bike that, that needs repaired, and I'm not even sure where to have it done locally. I would have to go to Dubois or Claire and have it done. I know with the Red Bank Creek right beside us, Kayaking is also a big thing. Follows the trail hand in hand right down through. If your friends don't want like the water, they can bike right beside you. I was on a sojourn. And we had 100 kayakers in our group alone. Uh, there are days you cross that bridge, it's just it's just a bunch of bright kayak colors on there. So there's a lot of interesting things down through that trail. You know, we've got bald eagles, we've got coke ovens, and, and there's many. The tunnel itself has as a, a story. There's been movies made there now. We just had our mountain laurels just, just bloom, our Pennsylvania flower. Beautiful this year. But you get down here with the dark greenery and the white flowers and the, and the cliffs and the, and the water. And I mean, you, you're going to have a hard time beating that scenery anywhere in the U.S. So. Many studies have been done about the economic impact of trails. Studies show that property values increase near trails, which can benefit the building trades and local tax base. Tourism is Pennsylvania's second largest industry. The art community, historic, tourism sites, restaurants, and service providers can also benefit when those visitors are not on the trail. Economic impact studies of the six small towns on the Great Allegheny Passage report about $50 million in annual direct spending and another $7.5 million on wages attributable to the trail market. Those six towns are similar and in some cases smaller than the towns along the Red Bank Valley Trail. Ohio Pile, for example, with a population of only 58, has five restaurants, two bike shops, five B&Bs, and a motel. Other trails in Pennsylvania also demonstrate a great economic impact in the millions of dollars on their local communities. OPM, Other People's Money can benefit the businesses and residents of towns along the Red Bank Valley and Armstrong trails if we welcome trail users with the services and experiences they are seeking. The potential is here to make the Red Bank Valley an even better place to live, work, and enjoy if we are willing to seize the opportunity. How can you seize the opportunity that the trails present? To summarize, services that trail users want include accommodating hours, places to stay, good food, ice cream of course, credit and debit cards are essential, having proud informed employees with some information about the trail who can point visitors to maps, websites, and brochures for more information, 
kayak and bike rental services, shuttle services, bike shops and repair facilities are all desired. While off the trail, trail users are looking for that small town experience. That includes art, history, shopping, places to visit, and good dining. Having the ability to ship purchases can help increase your sales. We thank you for your attention and wish you much continued success. For more information, please visit www.redbankren.org or call 814-275-1718. Thank you.